Good morning ladies and gentlemen, Peter Rass here from Foundation Expo 88 YouTube and I'm here this morning uh, in Sydney uh, with Sergio Rittigardi who was the creator of the Cascade which we've done a YouTube of uh, in the Adelaide Botanical Gardens which is a really fascinating um, uh, YouTube and we're just doing this unusual angle because we've got the plans here for the Cascade and it's just such a, a wonderful story uh, and just shows John Truscott's out there, out of the box uh, mindset. Uh, uh, so Sergio, if you could just tell us the story, starting off with the Vogue magazine, um, that would be great. In 81, 82, uh, I was continuing on with my laminated glass artwork and I was literally the only artist in Australia at that point that was cutting and gluing. And you, were, you were just out of university at that stage, weren't you? No, no, I was in. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, when yeah. I started doing these works, yeah. and the the series came together that I was getting very well known for with, with my gluing and cutting, and Cascade as a wave series developed, and this is actually the original master template that I created for cutting that's my sequences. One one, isn't it? This is a one to one for this piece. Yep. And what ended up happening was that the the image was photographed by Vogue. Vogue magazine yep. in, in that day, you know, the, the leading the, magazine. Yeah, but not the fashion, but the home entertainment mm. one, yep. so forth. And it was that actual Vogue magazine, probably and I I was trying to find it I would assume it was an 86 or 87 uh, year and John Truscott saw that in the magazine, found me, made contact with me yeah. and asked me if I could make this uh, piece that he saw as a prototype or a market, could I make it bigger and I said yes basically and it went from there. Yeah. It's just uh, quite incredible and then underneath that you've actually got uh, the plan map of, uh, of Expo, so did they send you this and say we want your piece here or? Uh, this one was a little bit further down the line where Expo was fairly well you know, designed and the pond area was here, the monorail. Yeah, this was, was the Pacific Pond. That's the Pacific, there, the Pacific Lagoon actually I think. Yeah, the Japanese Hall. Hall. Yeah. And so that was the location of uh, the actual piece. So where's the Japanese gardens? Probably here, aren't they? I actually can't remember. Oh, it, oh. it would have been, no, I think it was here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I realised because the Japanese gardens has an interesting story and it's saving. Um, and I didn't realise it was so close to your place. Well, everything was close in a lot of ways because, I mean, it, while it was a large area in Brisbane, it wasn't that larger area no, was compared to other world expos. No, it was compact, sorry. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing was that every time you went around a corner, you saw something else and you knew you wanted to head that direction. You've been speaking to Bob Minikin, haven't you? No. <laughs> because I, was, I was there long enough to know that yeah. there was a vista from almost every view. Yeah, that was actually planned vista by John Truscott um, at, at the board's direction. Is that, you know, everywhere you turned, you had to be a photo opportunity. As well as that, it encouraged, I think, people to have to come back because it was an impossibility to ever see Expo in one day. True. Yeah, even, even, I think if you went there every day for six months, you would have still seen something different. As well as the, the place changing environmentally with the, the plants and so forth over that time period. Yeah. Right. And so the concept of the wave, I mean, this is a, a world first, um, piece isn't it uh, and there were certain structural elements that uh, with the gluing and laminating that you had to work with? Well there wasn't anything to uh, assume or gain knowledge from with a piece like this even Dow Corning that we worked with with the silicon they were confident that we selected the right silicon that was going to be architecturally suitable yeah. but they themselves were hesitant to, to, to give warranties and so forth and they were assuming that we needed to cradle the glass for, for months before to, to make sure that it was cured but it outperformed 
itself literally, it literally. Like we found that within a week, there was no need to have any sort of support in any form format. It was staying there all by itself. And 25 years later, it's still sitting there down in the Adelaide Botanical Gardens. It is, and because it was, well, as a young artist then, thinking 25 years down the line, you know, it's like it's quite amazing to think back that far and to think that a piece that I made is actually still hanging around in a public area that hasn't been, you know, damaged with the environment because it is out of the open and, of course, vandalism. So I think out of all the places for it to have ended up being in the Adelaide Botanical Garden, it's probably the safest place that could have ended up. Yeah. All right. So do we might just stop that and resume, resume the second part of the YouTube on a normal plane. Thank you.